Hi there, it's uh, Dave from Out There Adventures, um, just in our woods at the end of a session that we've just had. Um, you can see springtime, the bluebells are looking pretty impressive. Uh, just as I popped back down here, I noticed a squirrel shooting up the tree and a kestrel flew off. So, and that tends to happen as we leave the site, all the, the uh, various birds and whatnot flood back to see what we've left behind, which is unfortunately for them usually nothing um, so we have just had a group leave the site and one of the clan members today was a young lady named Myrtle who'd made herself a whistle um, and then unfortunately right at the end of the day she managed to lose it so I said I would do a little video um, just so, as a reminder of all the techniques and the wood to choose and so on so she could make another one at home so we're going to look at making a whistle using a piece of sycamore um, you choose sycamore really at this time of year for a number of reasons. The sap is flowing, um, it's easy to separate the bark from the wood in the middle. Um, it's the layer between the bark and the actual wood is quite fibrous and potentially quite loose so you can um, kind of pulverize that layer and then if you're lucky you can pop off the outer layer, the outer sheath of the bark uh, create your whistle, pop it back on again. So that's what we're going to do today, and that's what she did earlier on. Um, you choose sycamore, um, identify it by uh, the shape of the leaf, which some people equate to looking like a maple leaf. Of course, it is very like that. Um, so that that uh, symbol that you see on the Canadian flag, it's that kind of shape. Um, you're looking for a piece that has. Uh, new bark and new growth and um, quite green looking. Um, you see I've got a piece here where it's maybe as thick as my little finger. Today we create some which were much thicker than that and so have a little bit of an experiment with the different sizes but generally the technique that you're going to use will be similar to what I'm going to show you guys now. So here we go making a whistle using a piece of sycamore um, and the only other tools you need perhaps are secateurs to harvest the material possibly a saw um, you could just do it with a knife at a push um, and of course the knife that you're going to need to be able to do the rest of the work okay so here we go all right so then I've got my piece of sycamore here I'm not going to worry about the length of it too much it's kind of easier to work if you keep it at a decent length first thing I'm going to do then having a quick look at where they the pith slightly off center I'm going to use that to my advantage a little bit I think so I'm just going to cut using a thumb push grip I'm just going to cut here so that I create I guess that kind of traditional whistle shape if you like a uh, couple of centimeters further back and parallel with that cut um, I'm just gonna put a little stop cut there and then again using a thumb push grip I'm going to create just cut a little wedge and create a space there. Keep the wedge relatively small, you can always make it bigger, but if you make it too big initially, you can't really reduce it that easily. So you can see I've got the little wedge created there. Now, about, I don't know, about six centimeters further back, I'm just gonna start rolling the knife, cutting through the bark. You'll hear it crunch as you go. And, um, and I'm rolling it slowly so that I'll meet the original uh, cut where I started. Okay, so I'm just going to roll it a couple of times around. Just take it easy because if the um, if the sap is really flown, it's kind of easy to cut all the way through at this point. Okay, so I've scored all the way around there. You can see that little cut there, and there's already a little bit of moisture coming out, which is always a good sign. I'm then going to hold the knife in this position. I've got the sharp edge pointing away from my hand rather than that way. Um, so it's pointing away and all I'm going to do at this point is just beat the surface of the bark all the way around. I'm not going to miss a single bit out, okay? And just beat the whole thing and we're just pulverizing the layer between the two, okay? So carry on doing that, make sure you go all the way around. Areas to really focus on that people miss out are around where you've put the little hole, 
where the air is going to escape and from there to where your mouth would be at this end so just make sure you get those bits too so keep pulverizing up and down but make sure you cover the whole area and then eventually you will be able to release the bark now this doesn't work first time that's all right you just learn something about the properties of the wood you choose a different piece and you know eventually you get to the stage where you're a little bit more successful with the bits that you choose it's quite strange sometimes different times a year different times in the spring i should say um, you can do it much earlier some years you can do it later in other years uh, sometimes it varies from tree to tree sometimes it just seems stubbornly dry and you can't really get anywhere that's just part of the process just accept it for what it is you can always make an elder whistle if you're getting frustrated with it and i've already done a video for the elder whistle which i'll pop a link to um, in the description below so keep bashing until eventually you'll get to the stage where you can separate the two okay you can just start to see that the the bark is starting to shift a little bit and if i squeeze it it's starting to lift and that's a good sign but i've just got to keep going um, you're eventually going to try and pull these with a bit of a twist and motion and it will just pop but if you do that too early you can lose out so just keep working and be patient bashing that whole surface and just focusing on the area around the mouthpiece if you like just making sure that's all well pounded sometimes it needs a good wallop sometimes you can take it a little bit easier if you start to see the, the outer bark separating and seeing the green underneath um, just just slacken off a little bit don't give it don't be quite so brutal with it This bit's feeling like it's a little bit dry, so it needs a little bit more oomph, let's say. So I'll just keep giving it a wallop. And eventually it'll just pop off. Okay, so just pop that back on for a second. Um, so eventually just with a little bit of a twist in action it will separate and you'll have hopefully an intact piece of the bark like that and you will have your whistle okay step from here then you can see this is where I cut through with my stop cut through the bark and thumb push so all I'm going to do just using the tip of the knife is just cut from our stock cut I'm just going to cut through like that making sure I keep it parallel sorry that's the police helicopter over overhead they're probably looking at the bloke in the woods with a knife and wondering what he's up to okay so all I've done there is just taking a little bit of a slice all the way through I've tried to keep it very level I've taken a slice through from the stock cut through to the mouthpiece and that's where the air is going to travel through. Now what I'm going to do is just work on that stock cut with a piece as thin as this. I'm going to be very gentle with it and then just push in and cut. So I create my stock cut and I'm just cleaning the inside. And like every whistle, I need to make it as clean as a whistle. So these little raggy edges that you can see, no use to me at all. Okay, if there's any fibrous bits, any fluffy bits inside the, the whistle, then you're not going to get that clean noise that you expect. So, this is a bit of trial and error to get the shape right. A bit of trial and error to get the depth right without cutting all the way through, which can definitely happen and has happened to me a number of times. If you're teaching this to kids, it's worth letting them know at the start that you could go to all this effort and end up with a whistle that doesn't whistle okay so what we've got then you can see from the overall diameter there we've dropped down here a couple of mil to leave this channel and we've created the chamber there the next step then from that point is just to slide this piece back in place gently all the way in 
until it reaches that point there okay and then all you've got to do from there as long as you've got that gap okay a little bit of fluff in there it hasn't made much difference and then just whistle now if you've made this gap too big and sometimes people do don't worry about it take it home let it dry out as it dries it shrinks and it might work again equally if you've made it just right you might find over a few days as it shrinks then it stops working so it's up to you which you want to go for um, usually with uh, kids I'll tend to make one that um, works initially because they want that um, and I might also make them a, a slightly bigger one to take home knowing it's going to shrink down if you are going to make these with kids I recommend you make them towards the end of the day otherwise you will get this ear piece and noise all day long it will drive you around the twist so I try and time it so that I create or the kids create the whistles just as I hand them back to their parents okay so there you go that one was for Myrtle and anyone else who's interested um, making a whistle using a piece of sycamore all I'm going to do now either with a saw or in this case with my secateurs let's just get the length roughly where I want it cut it off one whistle done and a couple of more whistles ready to go okay hope you enjoyed that as usual like and subscribe if that's the kind of thing you do um, and i'll see you on the next uh, video which might be something bush crafty might be up in the mountains might be rock climbing i've no idea um, but you know feel free to join us okay take care